I have to pinch myself sometimes because it doesn't seem real that I could be out in these epic locations shooting a video about a gimbal and this is my job. In this video, I wanna explore the different revenue streams that I've built over the last few years and how it impacts my business and gives me the freedom to make the videos that I want to make. And the cool thing about this is that Anyone can build a business online using their camera and building a following. And before we get into each one of these revenue streams, I just wanna say a special thanks to Uscreen for sponsoring this video. And I'll explain a little bit more about how I use Uscreen in a minute. Now, before we dig into the nine different revenue streams that I currently have as a creator, I wanna talk about a few things that are important if you are trying to build a business as a creator yourself. And essentially this business is creating video content on the web for others to enjoy. And then as an option from those videos, someone might decide to make a purchase. So all of your revenue streams that are centered around being a creator are tied to your videos. So it's very important that your videos come first and that is the most important thing that of your entire business because if you're trying to build a business as a video creator, you need to make sure you know what you're doing with your videos, making videos that are actually gonna reach the audience that you want to reach. Now I have a whole video that's 90 minutes that goes through how to build a YouTube channel and grow your audience, and I'll include that in the description so you can check it out after this video. Now the first big thing when it comes to building your creator business is being consistent with making content for others to enjoy. You need to come up with a consistency that's going to work for you. Could be once a week, could be once every other week, it could be four times a week. It all depends on what you're able to produce, how long it takes you to make a video, and what makes sense for the situation that you're in. You might have another job, and this might be something that you're doing on the side, and you can really only dedicate enough time to be able to make one video a month. Well, that's fine as long as all of the videos on your channel are consistent in terms of the audience that you're trying to reach, and you just do it in a way that's sustainable for you. And that's the second thing that you need to think about, which is making this sustainable. You wanna be a creator five, 10, 15 years in the future. You don't wanna focus all your energy into this thing right now, but then not be able to keep doing it year after year. To build a business is to think long-term. It's not to just be thinking about the immediate right now. So finding a consistent rhythm with the content that you're producing and making it sustainable so you could do this for year after year after year, those are two big key factors. And being able to build this into a business and focus on long-term growth over time rather than immediate results right now. And the next part to building a creator business is having multiple revenue streams. And that's what we're talking about in this video. I'm gonna talk about the nine different revenue streams that I've built to make this a sustainable business for myself. And so as I go through this, think about different ways that you can make money off of the videos that you're producing and start building out your portfolio of revenue streams. And it's gonna change over time. I started with one. And then over the years I've grown and now it's become nine revenue streams. And the last part is finding ways to make money that's not tied specifically to one platform. There's a lot of ways that I can make money off of YouTube. However, I have other ways of making money like my membership platform over on Uscreen, which is not tied to the success of YouTube. And then also I still do client work, which has nothing to do with my YouTube channel at all. So you want to figure out different ways that you're going to be able to make money that aren't tied to a platform that could change the algorithm or kick you off if you're making content that's deemed as unacceptable for the platform. Now, before we get into the nine different income streams, well, I want to talk just a little bit about making money as a creator in general. And there's a few different ways that you can make money. The first is earned income, and that's where you're trading your time or your services for money. So this would be something like you have a client and you're making a video for them. You have to use your skills and spend your time to be able to make that money. Now, the second way I see is passive income. This is where you build something, like say it's a YouTube channel with videos, and you're able to generate revenue off of those videos even after they're done and they're uploaded and you don't have to touch them anymore. And the idea of passive income is that you're making money while you sleep. And the third type of way that I see making money is investment income. And this is where you take that money that you've made from earned income or passive income and then invest it into an asset that then can generate more income. And so you'll hear real estate and stocks and that whole world of making money is where you're going to be able to make an income off of your investment money. And so when I first started out my journey of building my business as a creator, 
I didn't have nine income streams. I basically had one. And over the years, I've been able to add more to this and build up this portfolio to where I have more of a sustainable business that has all of these different income streams so that if one goes down, well, I'm not completely screwed. Like one income stream might go down and another might go up and everything fluctuates. So when you're building a business as a creator, you have to try and create some sort of security blanket. And the way to do that is having multiple streams of income. And so the first way that I make money from being a creator is by building courses. I have my own online class platform that teaches you how to be a creator. It's called the Creator Film School. And I offer courses on there that teach you about your camera, that teach you about YouTube, that teach you about how to use your drone or your gimbal. Basically, all the skills that you need to be a creator. And I've been building this over the last few years. I started out with just a single course, and that was how to sell stock footage. And I've been slowly adding more and more courses. And digital courses are a great way to make money because you just need to be able to have a skill that others would want to learn from you. So it could be anything. I have a buddy who's thinking about doing a photography course around using your smartphone because there's so many people that wanna take better smartphone photos but they're not professional photographers. So he's a professional photographer and he's gonna build a course that's more accessible to anyone who just wants to shoot a good photo. If you're a chef, but you also like backpacking, well, there's gonna be an audience there that wants to learn how to make better food when you're outdoors. So you could build a course around how to prep delicious food when you're in the backcountry. So there's lots of opportunities to build a digital course and it's not tied to views to be able to make money using this method. Some of the other ways that you make an income off of YouTube are really tied to the amount of views that you're getting on your videos. However, with a digital course, if you're teaching a skill that others really want to learn, well, you might not necessarily need millions of views to be able to sell this course and be able to access your audience. And you can sell it a variety of ways. You could use organic traffic, which is things like YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, or you could do paid traffic. If you know that this is a course that others are going to want to buy, well, you could buy ads, send some traffic to it, and as long as the cost of that traffic is cheaper than the amount of money that you're making off of your course sales, well, then you can keep running ads to drive people into your courses. And so if you have a skill and you wanna teach others, I highly suggest just thinking about building a course around your skills or even build a membership platform if you're gonna create multiple courses or just different content that you wanna produce and put behind a paywall month after month. Now, I personally have a membership platform that's less than the cost of a coffee a month or you can buy the courses individually. And I use the company Uscreen to build my entire platform because they make it super easy to be able to build a platform to house all of your courses or even just a single course and make it available to purchase, rent, or put into a membership. It's basically an all-in-one platform that gives you the ability to build a business as a creator. And what's cool with Uscreen is if you wanna build a membership, you basically can produce your own Netflix-style catalog for the content that you're producing. And also with your catalog, you have access to building your own community. So you can engage with your students. You could also do things like live streaming within the platform and be able to keep the conversation going and be able to stay engaged with the people who are part of your membership or buying your courses. Now there's also some features that allow you to be able to build your own apps. So if you're someone who wants to have a smartphone app or an app on like Roku or Apple TV, well, Uscreen gives you that ability to have your own standalone app. And Uscreen also gives you a ton of marketing features that makes it super easy to run your business all in one place. Now, personally, I chose Uscreen for my membership because they handle all the payments, billing, monthly subscriptions, and they have easy to use templates that are designed to monetize your videos quick and easily. So if you wanna launch your business as a video creator, I highly suggest checking out Uscreen. I'll include a link down below in the description where you could do a free trial. And if you wanna see how I've used Uscreen, well, head over to the creatorfilmschool.com. You could see how I've built out my whole sales page. And then if you click the catalog at the top, you could see all of the different videos that I offer. And you could purchase some of these courses as a standalone, or you could get a membership and have access to everything. It's just a really cool and simple way to put all of your paid courses and content in one place and make it super accessible for your members. Now, the second way that I make money off of being a creator is digital products. So personally, I sell LUTs. 
and LUTs are a color profile that you put over your footage so that you could have a distinct look when you're making your videos. Now there's two ways that you could do products. You could do digital products, like LUTs or presets or an ebook or something like that, or you could do physical products. And you look at some of the biggest creators on the platform and they're really diving heavy into the products. You see someone like Emma Chamberlain, she's making her own coffee, or Mr. Beast, he has his own chocolate bars. And you see some creators like Yes Theory who do a lot of clothing. They have their whole brand, Seek Discomfort. Now, digital products are a lot easier to produce because you make the product, and then it could sell over and over again, and you don't have to have inventory and you don't have to deal with shipping. However, if you have an audience that might be interested in a physical product that you're producing, well, it's still a good option to be able to build another revenue stream based off selling products. And all of these creators are able to sell these physical products because of the videos that they're producing. When it really comes down to it, you could have these different revenue streams, but it does come from views and building a community around the content that you're producing. And a lot of times coming up with a good product either engages that community or it solves a problem. So if you're in a particular niche and you see a product that is needed for that niche, well, you could develop that product and by producing videos, you have marketing to be able to sell that product. And typically digital products are a lot easier to produce and a lot lower cost of entry than a physical product, which is gonna take a lot of upfront cost and a lot of time to get it to market. Now my third income stream is through affiliate marketing. And that's where I talk about a product, say it's a new smartphone or a new camera or the light I'm using. And then if you wanted to buy that product, you click a link down below in the description and that link is a tracking link that tells the company that I sent that traffic and then they give me a small commission if that person decides to purchase that product. And for this channel here, it's been a very good source of income because I talk about a lot of products. And so if you have that opportunity and you're making recommendations or you're giving reviews and you include affiliate links in your description, well, you can make some money off of those links. And if you wanna see a full video where I talk about the entire process of how to do affiliate marketing, well, I'll link to that down below in the description. I did an entire 20 minute video that goes through everything you need to know about affiliate marketing, especially here on YouTube. Now, the next way that I make money off of being a creator is through brand deals and sponsorships. And as your channel grows, there's more opportunity to have a company market their products in your videos. Now, there's a few things you really have to think about when it comes to brand deals and doing sponsorships in your videos. Because you could go down the rabbit hole of sponsoring products that you're not actually interested in, and there's gonna be a disconnect, and it's actually gonna alienate your audience. And in the past, I've gotten in some bad situations by just saying yes to brand deals and not actually thinking through everything that I was doing with that brand deal. Especially when you're a smaller channel and these first deals start popping up, you don't realize that a lot of times they're bad deals and those companies are just taking advantage of small creators. When you take a step back and really think about it, to be able to reach an audience, especially a niche audience like the one that you're creating, a company would have to spend a lot of money in ads to be able to reach that audience. So if they're sending you a free product and expecting you to do these videos about that product and they're telling you what to do, well, they're essentially getting free marketing. A single product to them is not much money. And so you should be getting paid if a company is coming to you and asking you to use a product in your videos and actually give you talking points. Like that's a big no-no for free products. So what I've learned over the years is that when it comes to brand deals, you don't take a number from a company you need to set your own rates and it's based on what you think your value is worth. Brand deals can be super lucrative and my best performing months on this platform are from brand deals, which is wild to think that a channel that I started for free, just for fun, could get to the point where I'm making four, five figures off of talking about a product or service in a video. Pretty awesome, but also, I've said no to a lot of big brand deals because they don't fit my audience. Personally, I found that if you're going to do a brand deal, one, you have to believe in the product. You just can't talk about anything, especially if it's products that you wouldn't be interested in. And two, it has to be something that your audience might be interested in. I've been approached by some companies that have huge numbers attached to the brand deal, but they have nothing to do with my channel. And so it wouldn't make sense for me to do a brand deal on this channel for a product that my audience wouldn't be interested in and something that I'm personally not interested in. And some people might think that's crazy because it's so much money, but 
when it comes down to it, I'm looking at YouTube for the long game. I don't wanna just flood my channel with a bunch of advertisements that are just random products and random things. I pick and choose the sponsors that I wanna work with now and I'm very selective with that. With brand deals, it could be the biggest income stream for your channel, but also you have to be cautious with brand deals and actually do the things that make sense for you. Now, the next way that I make money as a creator is through client work. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, I have clients, but then I also have my YouTube channel and the videos that I'm creating. They're two completely separate worlds. I actually started out doing client work way before YouTube. I went to film school and then I started freelancing in filmmaking, eventually started my own production company and I still run that production company to this day. Now that production company is separate than my YouTube channel. Even though I teach about filmmaking and making videos here on this channel, I don't necessarily talk about that production company because that's its own niche and it's actually kind of different than here. My production company is all fitness videos. We focused in on the fitness community and built a niche production company and what we produce is multi-camera follow along workouts. And so my production company and my YouTube channel are basically two separate entities. And when my production company gets super busy, well, I scale back on my YouTube channel. But when my production company gets slow, then I put more videos out here on YouTube. And it just creates this balancing effect so things go in waves. And that's one thing you're gonna learn as you're building your business around being a creator is that it's a roller coaster. It goes up, it goes down. As you're going on this roller coaster, you're gonna find the balance and the rhythm that works for you. And you wanna find those revenue streams that are gonna be consistent over time so that you can go through the peaks and the valleys as the whole roller coaster goes up and down. Now, one of my other revenue streams as a creator is selling stock footage. And basically what I'm doing is licensing my footage for others to use in their videos. So I take some of my individual shots from the different videos that I'm creating and sell them on these agencies that are basically a library of footage that someone can go buy footage from and use in their videos. There is such a huge demand for footage, so if you're someone who's gonna be filming some really cool, unique situations or you wanna add another revenue stream, you can think about adding stock footage as one of those things that you can do to just bring in a little extra money. It's not huge amounts of money from stock footage, but as everything that I'm talking about, it goes in waves. So I definitely have some months where I make a lot of money off stock. And then there's other months where I don't make as much, but it is something that is growing over time, the more footage that I make available to sell. And the cool thing about this revenue stream is that once it's up on these stock footage agencies, I don't have to touch it. It's done. It becomes a passive revenue stream where that footage is just living in these different libraries and if somebody needs to use it, well, they're gonna purchase that shot and then I get paid from every one of those purchases. But I still own my footage. They're just licensing it from me. Now, if you wanna dig deeper into stock footage, I'll include a link in the description that explains exactly how you set up your stock footage business to be able to sell on these different agencies. Now, the seventh way that I make money from being a creator is AdSense. Now, as you grow a YouTube channel, well, you're gonna make money from the views that you're getting on your videos. And it's all based around CPM, which is the amount of money you get per thousand views. Now, if you have an entertainment channel, your CPM is gonna be super low. Whereas if you have something like a finance channel, well, you're gonna have a really high CPM because advertisers will pay higher rates on videos where they're gonna get more sales or higher sales. So my channel sits somewhere in the middle. On average, I get anywhere from a $10 CPM all the way up to a $30 CPM, which is really good in the YouTube world, but I've seen some of my videos get a $50 CPM. Whereas I have a buddy who has a fitness channel and his CPMs are like $4, $5, $7. So he's getting a much lower CPM, which means that he has to get two, three times the amount of views to make the same money that my channel can make off of the videos that I'm producing around filmmaking and education around filmmaking. And I hear a lot of creators talking about ad revenue as kind of like a tip jar. You shouldn't rely on ad revenue, but it's something that will grow over time with more views. Now for me, ad revenue has become a big revenue stream for this channel. Depending on the videos that I'm producing, the CPM could be pretty high, and if I get a lot of views on that video, well, ad revenue could do super well. And so ad revenue really comes down to the views that you're getting and the topic of your channel. And once you've established your channel and you're making videos in a niche, well, you can't really control the topic as much as you can control the views. And yeah, you can't control if someone's gonna watch your video or not, but you can focus on making videos that are getting more views for your channel, which is gonna boost your revenue. And you can actually go in the back of your analytics and see which styles of videos get higher CPMs, and you could target those topics to be able to make videos that could potentially make more money. 
However, if you're just consistently looking after those CPMs and trying to find those ones with the best and trying to just make videos in that path, well, it's gonna be like putting the carrot out front of the rabbit and chasing it. I don't think you wanna make all of your attention just focused on making the videos that have the highest CPM because at the end of the day, those might not be the ones that get the most views. Now, the next way that I make money as a creator is real estate. So off of the videos that I've produced here on this channel, I've been able to buy a house and that house is increasing in value over time. And this is where you get into the more general making money methods. My channel, my production company, those are ways that I've been able to build a little bit of savings that then I could turn into a house and that money can now increase in value even more because the value of the home is going up. And I've seen a lot of creators really diving into real estate where they're getting Airbnbs or they're buying multiple rentals and they're basically taking their money that they're building off the platform and investing it into real estate that then could turn into rental income and be a separate revenue source that's not tied to the performance of your videos. And you wanna look for these opportunities as you're building your business to not just always be tied to the videos on your channel because that's gonna be what's driving everything and getting everything going. But as you build your business, you wanna be looking for all of the different opportunities to be able to make this a sustainable career over the long term. And then after real estate, another way that I make money is off of investments. I'm looking at it for the long term. So I invest in stocks, I invest in mutual funds, I have a whole portfolio that all the extra money that I make off of my channel goes into that and I'm looking at 20, 30 years in the future. So obviously things in the market are a roller coaster and I treat it as excess cash goes into investments that could compound over the years and become a nest egg that then I could retire on down the road. Because as a creator, you're basically in control of your world, which means that you not only need to be thinking about right now, but you also wanna be thinking about 10, 20, 30 years in the future, and you don't wanna be tied to ad revenue 30 years from now, and that's your only source of income. So it's good to start with a few revenue streams and then work your way up to finding some different revenue streams that are outside of YouTube, outside of the platform, that could help turn this whole thing into a full-time career and eventually your retirement. Now I'm actually working on a 10th revenue stream which is my second channel. So I have a second channel here on YouTube, which is almost monetized. I'm like right at the edge, but that one's gonna become a whole different revenue stream because it's different content. And on that channel, I could go after some of these same revenue streams that I have on this channel, like ad revenue, affiliates, sponsors, but it becomes a whole different entity and there's gonna be different strategies that are going to come up with that channel because it's more of an entertainment channel. On this channel here, I have a lot more opportunities for affiliate marketing and more brands that are tied in the camera filmmaking space. Whereas my entertainment channel, it's not gonna be as good at ad revenue, it's gonna be much lower CPMs, and the affiliates probably won't be that good because I'm not gonna be talking about products. However, there's gonna be more broad appeal sponsors that might be interested in that content, especially if I can get the views up, which is very different than this channel here, which has a lot more opportunity around the products that I talk about. I think a good thought exercise for you is think about 100 video ideas around the topic that you want to produce. And the reason I say that is, well, you're gonna be making videos for a long time into the future. And if you can only come up with a handful of ideas and they take you months to make, well, you're not gonna be able to build a sustainable career off of that kind of content. Whereas if you can come up with hundreds of ideas and they take you a week or two weeks to make a video, well, that's a much more sustainable career, especially in this world where we're making videos consistently over time for years. It's not like a one and done type of deal. You wanna think about how you can do this long-term and just keep making consistent videos and something that you're actually gonna be interested in because if you do five videos and then you're bored of this content or it's not really exciting for you to make it anymore, well, you're not gonna be able to do it 500 videos later. You wanna be making the videos that you actually enjoy because at the end of the day, you're gonna be putting all your time and effort into these videos. And if it's not something that you're particularly interested in, well, you're gonna get burned out super quick. So the key takeaway from this video is that you don't wanna just rely on one income stream, but you also don't wanna to try to do 10, 15 income streams all at once. You wanna build it slowly over time. And so look at the type of content that you're producing and start thinking about the different revenue streams that you can go after and just slowly pick them up one at a time. And as you grow as a creator, everything else is gonna grow with you so this can become a sustainable career. Now next, make sure you check out this video right here which goes through basically everything you need to know on how to grow a YouTube channel right now. I'll see you over there.